When you look at this deal, let me cut to the chase. Do you have the same enthusiasm about Twitter that you had about Facebook? Well, Tom, thanks. First of all, I don't own any Facebook shares, but uh, <laughs> the, the bottom line is no. I, much as I respect Twitter and I love it as a service and I think it has an extraordinary brand and it's probably around for, the, for a long time, it's by no means a company of the scale and gravity and long-term potential of Facebook. It just isn't. What should the bankers have learned from the Morgan Stanley debacle? Well, I just think that, uh, you know, you, I don't think Facebook and Twitter need to be compared. I think that, you know, the, whatever problems Facebook had in its IPO, uh, honestly, I think are, are not really relevant to Twitter. I think that was a one-time event. Uh, mistakes were made by the company, clearly, and by NASDAQ. But, um, you know, I think Twitter is probably a company that's going to come in at roughly one-tenth the size of Facebook. Its revenues are roughly one-tenth of Facebook. Uh, I think the prospects for it to grow its revenues at scale are somewhat smaller, although they're growing nicely from a relatively small base at the moment. Uh, the good thing about Twitter is that from the beginning it was designed to be a mobile service, and we're entering into an era where the Internet is mobile, and mobile is the Internet. So Twitter's well-positioned in the sense that it works well on mobile, but it's also so simple that it really actually is very constrained in terms of becoming something much more. Mm. David, we hear that Sheryl Sandberg is at the same meeting that you are attending at the World Economic Forum, the chief operating officer of Facebook. Is she talking at all about this? She's not talking about this. She came and went. She was very much talking about uh, leadership and women and leaning in and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, she's, she's not here any longer. The conference is actually winding down now. But uh, I do believe she was doing quite a bit of conversation with uh, government regulators, as has been reported, and, and a lot of people here just trying to figure out what the chances are, what the status would be if Facebook were to try to re-enter China or to try again to enter China as they've done once before. And, you know, however much she wants to do it, it's not nearly as much as Mark Zuckerberg wants to do it. Right. Getting into China remains Zuckerberg's probably top thing that he's been thwarted from. It's period. the holy grail for Facebook. Uh, David, I want to bring it back to Twitter for a moment here because Twitter filing its IPO through the confidential IPO option, will that help it or hurt it? Well, I think it maybe it's helping because it's adding an element of mystery to this whole thing. It gives it maybe a little bit more uh, uh, time in the news cycle, which is what uh, will help because marketing matters for everything, and uh, it gets people psyched up. I think Twitter will be a successful IPO simply because, you know, people have a lot of affection for the brand. It's extremely well-known. It's a hot company. Uh, it's been, you know, much awaited. Um, but, but I still don't think that Twitter has really proven itself as a business of scale. It's, it, it does right. have some clever ways of advertising in its stream, but, uh, you know, it really is constrained in terms of the ways it can work. Right. I, mean, I mean, Tom, I'd love to know from Tom. He's a big fan of Vine, which is one of Twitter's new features. I mean, I don't know whether they're going to ever make money from that. I agree. I went right on to Instagram, going from 6 seconds to 15 seconds, David, and I think that shows the technological progress that's out there. <laughs> David, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. The Facebook effect. You know, folks, I love the book, like Real Engineers and Real Technology.